Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar from Kelso Consulting where we're going to be looking at how to get the best from Google Ads. It's particularly relevant to professional and consultancy businesses, but it's going to be uh, very useful, I'm sure, for all sorts of B2B businesses as well. So welcome. First of all, just a little bit of housekeeping. We will be recording this and providing it to you um, on Monday in both podcast form, so you can listen to it while you're out and about, and also as a video. Please do share these with your colleagues or go back and look at uh, bits that were particularly relevant for you. We'll also be emailing you various useful resources. In terms of questions, uh, we have a question box here. I'd be grateful if you could just put into that that you can hear me okay. If it's too loud, let me know. If it's too quiet, let me know. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Claudio and uh, Tony and everyone else on here. Uh, great you can hear us. We'll be taking questions at the end, but we'll also be taking them as we go along. So if a, uh, you've got a particular question about something as Dominic is demonstrating, please do fire them through and just let you know we'll be finishing at 1.30 promptly. Now, first of all, just to in, uh, introduce myself, my name is Tim Priseman. I'm from Kelso Consulting. Usually I'm presenting our webinar, so I'm delighted to say today that I'm simply chairing it and will be uh, able to sit back in just a minute and hand over to my very capable expert guest, Dominic Renshaw of Ad Extra, who will be introducing himself in just a moment. Uh, the reason we're hosting this webinar is um, a few years ago, in fact, about 10, 15 years ago, I started to use Google ads and I found them very effective, very cost effective. We won a number of big clients through them. But over the years, more and more PR agencies started to use them themselves. Quite frankly, the panel on uh, Google got more and more complicated and I drifted out of using them and I think there's probably a lot of people in this position who know they can be used effectively but for whatever reason haven't got to grips with them in uh, the recent years. So I'll be uh, curiously making lots of notes as well. On that note, I would be delighted to hand over to my guest Dominic. Hello there, Dominic Renshaw here. Um, I'll be taking the wedding mile most of the way through. Um, I'm the owner of Ad Extra, managing director over Ad Extra, and basically we we set the business up about eight years ago, and we specialise only in Google Ads and Google Analytics. That's where we specialise because that's what we've been doing very well. Years and years ago, we did do SEO and we did do Facebook, etc., and everything else. So we're very conversed with those, but we realised we wanted to specialise exactly what we wanted to do. So uh, that's pretty much our background. My background. Um, all my uh, consultants that work for us are uh, are qualified in uh, both AdWords and analytics, and it takes them just to give you an idea. Whenever we take somebody new on board, it takes us about a year to train them up fully so they're conversing it. So that gives you an idea. We're going to give you a very quick overview today, but uh, just to give you an idea, it's about a year for each training uh, person in, in, involved. I'll pass you back to, to Tim. Okay, so... We'll be covering the highlights and certainly enough for you to uh, know what's important. Um, but yes, clearly with a year's amount of trading in some areas, we won't be going into all the details. So thank you very much, Dominic, and uh, we're in your hands. Excellent. Okay, folks, we'll dive straight into this. As Tim said, um, please feel free to ask questions as we go. And if I see a question that we're going to be covering later on, I can cover it at that stage. But uh, rather than forgetting what the question is, just ask it as we go. I'm very uh, relaxed about that. What I'd like to go through today is we're going to be covering what, how, how important it is to get the setup right of Google Ads and then what to do with the management side of the coin. Now, I can't stress enough, the setup is the most important bit of Google Ads. Get that bit right and the management is easy and then you can get a return on your investment. Without the setup right, 
I'll be honest, it does not work. We get a lot of companies coming to ourselves with AdWords they presently have, and they ask us, can you manage the campaign as it's set up? And we're very honest and say, 99% of the time, I'm really sorry, we can't make it any better with how it's set up. We will need to reset it up correctly, and then you'll see a big difference. So that's what we're going to go through, the setup and the management. And as I say, any questions at the end as well. So uh, just ask as we go or at the end. So let's have a quick, uh, what, what is Google Ads before we, before we kick off? Google Ads is very simple. Most people see um, ads at the top of Google whenever you type anything into your PC or into your mobile phone. That is what they call standard Google Ads. That's all what they call keyword driven. So somebody might, for example, type in, um, what is Google Ads? And the ads flow up at the top, or they might say, well, can I get a Google Ads agency? And ads fly up at the top of Google. Now this is on desktop and on mobile. What else you've got out there is that you've got things, you can have ads on the videos, you can have ads on maps, you can have ads, for example, with printers, for example, if you've got a printer out there and you're selling a specific type of printer, you'll have the actual pictures of the printers turn up. And last but not least, you have those ads when you're on different websites, so the classic ones are holiday websites, you get all the flights down the right hand side. They're called display ads. Google owns all these platforms. So the standard ads is what most people think is the only way to go, but depending on your company and what you need to do with its B2B or B2C, it all depends on what sort of ads you need. And I'll, I'll, I'll briefly go over those. If anybody's got a very specific question about their business, just throw it up there and say, which is the best type of ads for myself? And I can answer that as well at the same time. So that's what Google ads are. Moving on to the next one. Okay, let's go straight into this then. So how do we get the best out of our Google ads? Number one is setup, and number two is management. Mm -hmm. So I want to have a look at the setup first uh, and explain how you actually set a Google AdWords campaign up um, at, from start to finish. The first thing, and I'll just run through these first before I go through any examples, is the keywords. Now, when I mention the keywords, this is what people physically type, or even more these days, speak into Google. Because obviously a lot of people speak into their mobile phones now, they don't, they've stopped typing. And the difference between the two is quite, quite significant. People will type differently than they speak. So you've got to cover all bases in this. From the keywords, that will then work down into what your campaigns will be. And then within the campaigns of Google AdWords, there are things called ad groups. It's basically the campaign is split it down even further than just being a campaign. We're going to go through the ads themselves and how the extensions work, how critical it is to have the landing pages. So if somebody actually does click your ad, they go to the right place. You probably had it yourself. There's nothing more frustrating um, having a landing page when you click something and you can't get to the information you actually need. And finally, the last one is conversion tracking. This has become exceptionally important in the last 12 months with regards to Google Ads. If I was being honest, if anybody's seen a downturn in their campaign in the last 12 months, I almost guarantee it's going to be to do with conversion tracking. Um, because Google has basically said, well, if you don't have conversion tracking in place, your Google Ads will not be working. That's the simple maths of it. That's what's happened. They haven't come out and said it in public, but that's basically what's happened. I'll go through management in a minute, but let's kick off with, with uh, the setup side of the coin. So I'm just going to flip screens. On to first off, this is keywords. So if I was starting out in a business, I'm going to take a funeral directors in this example because it's purely example I've got. So if I was a funeral director, for example, I would want to know what search terms people are going to type in for my services. And the way I do that is really, really easy. I would go into Google AdWords. And I'll go, I'm just going to go into any campaign. Don't worry that I'm going into a specific campaign at the moment. I'm just going to show you exactly what I would do. So I'm going to go into a campaign. Hopefully this will open up on us. Fingers crossed. And I will go into keywords and I will add keywords. Now, years ago, just in case anybody knows, we're going to go into something called Keyword Planner. It is Google's software that tells you what people search for on Google. But now it's integrated in Google Ads. In the old days, and I'm only talking six months, nine months ago, you used to find something called Keyword Planner. So if you're wondering what the difference is, it's just been integrated into Google AdWords now. So if I want to know what people are searching for, I will add a keyword. Don't worry about the interface at this stage. Don't think, oh, I need to know exactly. Oops, a daisy, I'm adding a, and I'm adding a Google, I'm adding a, um, we're a little bit slow on the internet here, so uh, bear with me. Do bear with me on this one. Let's, uh, oops, a daisy. Let's go into keywords. Add keywords. Nope. Let's 
not actually working here. Bear with me a second. Okay, I will try and try and go into this while, while I'm talking to you at the same time. But it's not actually working. For, ah, there we go. Now it's working. Now we should be in business now. It too just seems to be working. Okay. Let me scrap that a second. I'll try and come back to that one. For some reason, it is not connecting to where we need it to connect to. But say, for example, if I typed in funerals in Berkshire, what the tool does gives you all the possible possible um, ter search terms people are using. Now, I did this before, and all these keywords were given by Google. There are thousands of them. There literally are. There's funeral prices, uh, funeral plans, cremations, bereavement, you name it. There are thousands and thousands of them. Now, what you do is you get this long list in a raw format, as you can see here. What you then do is split that down, because it's what, when you are, whenever you're doing Google Ads, you make sure the keywords drive what you want to do. So I've gone, okay, I want to learn about, uh, I want to actually get the keywords for, um, for, for funerals, but also cremation will come up, bereavement will come up, and many others. So I take this big long list, and I separate it. Any of the keywords that are to do with funerals will go in one list. Anything to do with cremation is going another. Anything with bereavement will go in another. So you're starting already to realize that I've searched for funerals in Berkshire, but I've now got all the search terms to deal with that. In so doing, I put all the funerals together. What I would then do, sounds really strange, I would look at which ones can go together. All these search terms here are to do with arranging a funeral, and I've put arrange plus funeral next to it. These ones here are all to do with funeral companies. People type in funeral companies, for example. They get batched together another. Funeral cost, price, cost, they're all batched together as well. It's a laborious process, this, but this is the most critical part of getting your campaign set up correctly at the start. You get all the keywords that you need, and then you start to bunch them into different areas. So what number one is, say this is just funeral, the second one would be cremation and bereavement. So let's just look at funeral. This would be one campaign. That's just one campaign. But what you will have, a range of funeral is an ad group. It's a split out. And the reason for this is because you want the search terms in that specific air ad group and they will relate to the ads. And that's how you split it down. If you don't do this at the start, what you end up with is lots and lots of odd little terms. So you type in yourself and you think they're the right ones. You don't really have any structure to it. And if you don't have any structure, you can't possibly manage it. So if nothing else, if you don't do anything else, just go through this from your present, kit, for your present campaign and go, okay, I want to find out what the keywords are and then literally go straight through and break them down into a campaign and then into ad groups. The great thing is when you're doing this, you will see all those, ad, all those search terms that came up, any ones you don't want, you put them in a negative keyword list, all here. For example, cheap comes up a lot, pretty much on every single campaign, cheap will, cheap will arrive. The negative keyword list is just as important as the positive one. We want to know what people search for, but we also want to exclude anything they, we don't want them to search for. We don't want your ads to show. So at the same time you're doing the positive keyword list, you will see keywords you don't want, and you put them in a secondary list, and then add them into your Google Ads. That's as simple as it is. What you will find with a lot of campaigns, and you've probably maybe got this yourself, if you look at your keyword list and then your negative keyword list, there might not be so many things in the negative keyword list, whereas you can see here, there are hundreds. And this was just one search on funerals, for example. From that, because now we've actually got all the, all the relevant ad groups, because you know the campaigns are, we've got funeral, cremation, bereavement. We know what the ad groups are because we've put them into groups of arranged funeral, for example. Now you can go ahead and build the campaign. It's as simple as that. There's no, no, it's not difficult. So I'm gonna go back to our, our example. Let's close out of this one. Um, Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Let me just go to the other one. I'm just going to open the other one instead. For some reason, the other one is uh, having problems. Okay. So we have got here lots of different campaigns. There are loads and loads. This is a test account, by the way. So don't worry about it too much. But there are lots and lots of different campaigns here. But I'm just going to go into one in a second once uh, it comes down. This has got a, a bit of a slow connection. So I'm struggling to get down to the one I need. But when, when we get there, I will do. Two seconds. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. We are going to get there a second. Oh, no, we are. Here we go. Let me go to Google Ads test. You are up to Google Agency, Google Shopping I'm looking for. Please slow down a little bit. There we go. Google Shopping. Where are you, Google Shopping? Anybody see Google Shopping? 
at Huge Shop. It is a top one. I already brought it to the top before. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so I've clicked on the actual campaign itself, and this should break down into ad groups. So the campaign was Google Shopping in this case. The ad groups should be coming up as a second. It is, should be coming up any second. There we go. Now, we've got one ad group in here, but you would, in funerals, you'd have different ad groups of arranging a funeral, funeral costs, etc. Going into the ad group itself, we will see the keywords. And this is just going to come up in a second. Okay, with reference to the keywords, they will all come up in a second. There are different types of keywords you will use, but because you've done the research with the Excel spreadsheet, you will already know what keywords you're going to need. And you literally paste them into here. It's as simple as that. Now, there are different types of keywords. There are three different types of keywords. Well, there's actually four different types of keywords, but the ones you need are broad match. Basically, that may say funeral Berkshire. And that will bring anything to do with anything to do with funerals, anything to do with Berkshire. It's too wide. But because you've done your research, you can put something called phrase or exact match keywords. Now, the way these work are phrase match keywords or anybody who might say funeral of Berkshire. It's a phrase. And therefore, anything to do with that phrase, your ad will show. Or you could have exact match. And these little ones are with the little squares around them. Basically, an exact match is where somebody types it in exactly. Now, exact match keywords changed some time ago where people don't, for example, Google Shopping Consultants here. That doesn't have, they don't have to type exactly Google Shopping Consultants. It's anything very, very close to that and the ad will show. Years ago, it used to be exactly. So if somebody missed the S off or spelt it incorrectly, it didn't show. That's all gone now. Exact match is simple. Google Shopping Consultants. Google's clever enough now to realize it's, it's if somebody says, G-O-G-L-E and doesn't put an extra O in there, it will still show, for example. It's, it's very, 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 very good. Because you've done your research, you can put all your keywords in here. It's really that simple. And the great thing is, when you start seeing the information come through, and we'll talk about the management in a moment, you can then amend it as you, oops, amend it as you need to. The next one then. So when you've put your ads in here and your negative keywords, which is here, you can then start to go, okay, what else do I need to do? I need to do the ads themselves. Now, if we go to ads, it's just up here. The interface changes around a lot, by the way. I must admit, within a month, the interface can change around a little bit more. And it had a massive update um, a year and a half ago. And some of you may be looking at the old interface. Uh, there are a few accounts still out there in the old interface, but we are using the new one at the moment. Now, with reference to the ads, because you've broken down the keywords into each individual ad group, you're now able to write the ads very specific to the keywords in that ad group. So for example, Google Shopping Specialists. This is what the ad group's all about. And it's really, really good. I'm gonna open up one of these so we can actually see it in a bit more detail. It may take a few moments to load. It's just opening up at the moment, hopefully. There we go. Now, the great thing is with ads, years and years ago, you used to have one headline um, and then basically nothing below it. But now what happens is Google's a lot, lot, lot cleverer and you can have several headlines of what people want to see. So here's an example over here at the start, start selling management opportunity. It, it rotates around, it picks these. So Google shopping specialists, increase ROI. We've got several, one, two, three, four, at least 15 different headlines here. Now, what Google does, it looks at the keywords you've chosen for that ad group. It then looks at the actual um, the headline and goes, which one fits best? It does the work for you. Years ago, you, has to, you had to write all these separately for each individual one. You don't have to anymore. You can write them all in a big long list, and Google will go, I'll pick that one because that's better. It knows what's best. So it really, really helps you. From there, you can then add your description. So we've got lots and lots of descriptions here. We specialize in running effective Google champa uh, champagnes, campaigns, book a free consultation, et cetera, et cetera. You can have lots of these as well, which means the bottom of your ad over here changes around depending on what people type in. It's a lot more automated than it used to be. But in so doing, it means setting up these ads is a bit time consuming, but it's gonna save you a massive amount of time in the end. So what we've done is we've got the relevant keywords We've then got the relevant ads to do with those keywords. Now, last but not least, what happens to these ads when you physically click on them? They go to a landing page. Now, what is a landing page? 
is basically the page on your website where you want somebody to take an action because you've paid for the ad, they've clicked on the ad, the last thing you want is them to walk off your website because they didn't find the information you want. So I'm just gonna show you which landing page this would go to. And it will actually go to this landing page, just loading up a second. So call, book a call with a Google Shopping Expert, free audit of your campaign. Very simple. Now we had the keyword as a book uh, as um, a, a Google Shopping Expert. We then had the ad saying the same thing and we've got the landing page saying the same thing. And as you'll see here, this is just an example of a landing page. What I don't want you to do is, for example, take a screenshot of this and say, we need to do the same with our landing page, because you don't. Landing pages all are very, very different depending on what you're working on. You, if you're a B2B, for example, you might have a slightly different landing page. If you're in a different industry, you have a different landing page. This is where you'll try different landing pages depending on what is happening. And I'll explain in a second about the conversion tracking and that will make a lot more sense. So for example, on this landing page, very simple to explain exactly what it is, this area here. Lovely video if you want to play that, that which explains all about Google Shopping, my details, and then a book of what you want them to do. We want ours to schedule a consultation. You might want them to call you. You might want to buy something. There's different things. Your call to action will be different than mine. For example, if I click schedule consultation, uh, we've got a little widget called Calendly, and basically it will go off to my diary and see when, when appointments are available and they can click in and book appointments straight away. That's instantaneous through to the consultants. The consultants will ring them back at the required time they wanted to book in. So that's an example of a landing page. Well, what we've told them in the ad, we've told them to book a call. That's what the ads say. When they, come to the web, when they come to the landing page, it says book a call and they can book a call straight away. This is what this is all about. So your keywords relate to your ads, relate to your landing page one two three if they don't do that then turn your campaign off for now until you get that bit right because you'll be wasting money i will not lie now approximately oh, when was it six to nine months ago conversion track conversion tracking came in within google now what this basically does it says okay what do you want your google adwords to do the simple fact is most people want to either generate a lead or they want to have a product bought let the simple two what two of them there may be different ones but they're the general ones that most businesses want now all conversion tracking means is you've got code on this on this landing page for example that tracks how many people come to this page i've then got how many people click the schedule consultation and i've also got how many people physically book a consultation so i've got a funnel the funnel first is how many people went to the page second bit of the funnel is how many people Click the button, and the third one is how many people completed the process and actually booked a consultation. One, two, three. Now, Google looks at that and goes, that's really, really good now because we now know what we need the ads to do. So all I literally tell Google is, right, I want anybody, I want to actually concentrate on getting people booking a call. That's what I want. Not the amount of people that go to my page. Uh, it's the end bit, of this con uh, end bit of this funnel I'm interested in. And that is where Google Ads has changed significantly over the, over the last year. If you don't have this tracking in place, your campaign will be working probably a tenth of what it could possibly do, if that. So if you're looking at your Google AdWords now and thinking, all I ever look at is how many clicks I get. Well, that's what I seem to look at. I seem to get 100 clicks, but I don't really seem to get any calls. This is the reason why. You've got to get the conversion tracking in place. Now, I'm not going to lie, conversion tracking is a whole different area of Google, and I highly recommend you get a professional in to to, to actually put the tracking together. It doesn't take long. It's probably half a day's work to get it, somebody to get it right for you first time round, but it'll make a massive difference to your campaign. In so doing, if anybody wants me to take a look at their website, I'm happy to, happy to do so. I can do it now on the screen or at any time. But if any of you have got the question box open, feel free to, to if you want me to have a quick glance at your website now, and I'll see what yours is like and how your customer journey works. As I say, it's very quick and clean, clean here on this, on this landing page, but you'll find if you go to your own website, and this is the funniest thing if you want to do, go to your own website, have a look where your customers come into your website, and then find out what journey you're sending them down. Are you telling them, literally as simple as this, book a call? Because if you're not, you're going to be missing out on quite a lot. My ah, website is, here we go, two seconds, somebody's come up with a website. It is Exportier. Give me a second. X P O R T. 
Excellent. I'm just bringing that website up now. So I shall have a quick look at it now. So if I'm, a, if I'm just looking around, this is the first page I come to. Nice, uh, nice big picture on there. Just accept your cookies. So if I'm on this page now, I think there's a bit more to load, I hope. Yeah, it's still, it's still loading at the second. So let's, let's let, it, let it all load, load and let's see exactly what I do. Here we go. Exportia, yeah, read more. Your global trading partner. Exportia Limited specializes in supply of a wide range of food items, including, okay, so it's food items, okay. So if I'm here now, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to read more? Because that appears to what you want me to do. So I'm going to click read more. From that, this is about us. Okay, brilliant. Okay, well, what, what is it you want me to do? Do you want me to call you? Do you want me to email you? That's this customer journey, for example. Um, I, hope that's, I hope that's helpful, Claudio, because what, I, what, what it's saying to me is, because I've never been to your website, I've, I've never actually seen it, but I'm now going, okay, all, I really, all you want me to do is read more about your website. You're not actually telling me, do you want me to contact you? And if I do want me to contact, which I assume you do, how would I contact you? Now, you could say, oh, it's always in contact us button. Yes, it is. But if you're able to write it into your script as to exactly what you want people to do, because in essence, you, you're probably aware that people don't spend a lot of time on websites if they don't find the information or what they need to do quickly, that's when it falls down. Let's go to contact us, which is where I'm going. So I'm reading your, reading your message at the same time, Claudio, so that's awesome. So if I go to the contact us, whoops, it's easy. Not sure what happened there. Let's go back to contact us. So if I go to contact us, you can fill out a form. But for some reason, I'm not sure why, that keeps resizing. It might be this screen. So you can fill out your name, your email, and message. Now, that's very good because you're only asking for three things. That's a really good idea. You don't want too many things in there. But if you want to call them, for example, you'd need a telephone number. But in your case, you've obviously put down the email is the best way. So that's really, really good. So in your situation, you would track how many people came here and how many people clicked the send button. That would be your conversion process. But let me just throw this out, out there. If, say, for example, I'm on your homepage and you had your contact, you actually had a little widget here that had that little full in box on the right hand side so people can always fill it out, would that be better than people having to click straight through to here and wait and then click through to here? Just throwing it out there are different ways because people like to do things quickly. Something's resizing on this each time for some reason. For, as twice I've clicked the contact, doesn't it? Going back. It's really strange. Anyway, does that make sense? So basically, what we're looking at is Look at the customer journey. If I come to your homepage, what do I do? I click the read more. When I click the read more, there's nothing to say, contact us now. And that's where the, the journey is falling down. But uh, from a conversion point of view, when you get to the contact us, you want to see how many people come here and how many people physically click that send button. Because you might have 100 people here and only four of them click the send button. Some people may click the, um, the telephone number. This is not a clickable link from here, but that may be because I haven't got Skype on. Also, sales app, I can't click that to open open up your my automatic email, for example. So you may want to make that a clickable link so people can click that straight away. So you track all these in different funnels. So you can start to see so 100 people come in here, how many fill out the form, how many... It keeps reverting back, that's really strange. How many people send you an email or how many people physically give you a call or how many people fill out the form. And from that, you can then say, okay, this is either working or it's not. If you change this page in any way, you might find you increase your uh, percentage amount of people who fill out the form and actually then obviously convert going down the line. So I would spend a lot of time, a lot of people have this, and they've never changed it, but why not change the color of this? Or, or rather than contact us, tell people, please fill out form, we will call you back in X, or please give us a call for urgency. If you need an instant answer, call us now. Tell people exactly what you want. That helps. So on the management side of Google AdWords, because we talked about the setup, the management is exactly the same. Now, with the management, the great thing is you've ne right at the start, you've worked out what campaigns you want. And I'm going to go back to the funeral directors because you had funerals, you had bereavement, you had, um, what was the other one? Let me just go to there a second. You had, eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Oh, you had cremation as well. They are the campaigns. From there, you worked out what keywords you wanted. And more importantly, you worked out what negative keywords you wanted. The management side of the keywords is really easy. You start to look at which, when you're in Google AdWords, you start to look at which keywords are giving you the clicks. And because you've got your conversions set up, 
you can start to see which of those keywords is converting for you. Now that's critical because you may have 15 keywords that are producing loads of clicks, costing you a lot of money, but not one of them is producing the conversion you want, whether that's to contact you or whether that's to ring you, whichever one it might be. So what it is telling us there is those keywords are not necessarily the right ones. They're great to show your ads, but they're not the ones producing conversions. So what you then do, you pause those keywords and you let the rest of them run. You can have loads of keywords. You can let the rest of them run. And by doing so, you will start to work out which keywords actually produce conversions for you. Not clicks, but conversions. And that's a bit of a laborious process at the start. You're going to have, in the first few months, you'll be doing a lot of pausing and unpausing of keywords. But because you've split it all down into different campaigns and then different ad groups, what I suggest to people is start with an area that works really well for you, that you know already works. It's the main part of your business. And make sure where your if that works already, pop into Google AdWords, get that working, get those keywords working, and then move on to the next campaign or the next ad group. Do not just throw everything out there and think it'll work. Get one working at a time because as soon as you start getting a return on investment on one, strange enough, you can spend that return investment on the next campaign, the next campaign, and so forth. The negative keywords. I mentioned it here. You will have a list of negative keywords at the start. But in Google, and I'm just going to show you this. In Google, when I go back to Google a second, any mini money mo, it's going to come up in a second. You can actually see what people physically type in. So you have these keywords. You can actually see what people physically type into your um, when they when they when they physically type in. It shows your ad. So in a second, it's just running a little slow. This so keywords I'll try hopefully to get to this one so we can actually see what people type into Google these are the search terms here this little tab here will show you exactly what people typed in and the great thing is when you're managing it you look at what people type in not necessarily which keyword was triggered but what people physically typed in and in so doing you can then go okay I'll take that phrase and I'll add it to the keywords or I'll take that phrase because it was the wrong customer I wanted and I'll put it into the negative keyword list. So what you're looking at and most 99% of the time is actually search terms. You're not looking at the keyword, you're looking at what people physically typed in. These are the things that are people physically typing in, these ones here. They're really, really important. And going through this, you can go, okay, I want to make that negative, I want to make that positive, I want to make that negative, I want to make that positive. And the more you do that, the more streamlined it gets to what the keywords are correct. But always remember, you're looking for the ones that have produced conversions, not the ones that have produced the clicks. It's as simple as that. With the ads, you can then look at your ads, for example, and you can start to you can start to see which ads are working better for you. So, for example, I'm going to go to this one. You'll start to see which ads produce the most clicks. But same again, you can start to see which ads produce the most conversions. And in that way, because you've got lots and lots of ads in here, what you can do, we've only got two in this one, for example. This is just a test one. Uh, these two are, dis are disapproved, as it happens, but this is a test campaign. <laughs> but um, if, say, for example, you had an ad and you had six ads and one's producing lots and lots of clicks and conversions and the one below it isn't, change the ad. Just change the ad. That's how we manage them. We keep the good one and we change the bad ones and we just keep doing that continually. Now... A lot of people fall into the trap. They think they've got the best ad in the world and it works for three months. And all of a sudden it stops working because Google's algorithms change. So you've got to keep on top of this. You've got to look at it regular. So you've got to change the ads on a regular basis. So as soon as one ad stops working or slows down, change it. Don't worry about changing it. It's a continual thing. The next side of the coin is your landing page. So once, you've got, once you're managing your keywords and then you're managing your, your ads, then you need to manage your landing page. Now, for example, this landing page is blue and it has a, a, a video on there. It says schedule consultation. What you would also have, you'd have a second one, exactly the same, different colors, slightly different words. You will see a difference in the amount of people that, um, sorry, I'm reading a question at the same time there. You will see a difference in the amount of people that click schedule consultation when it's a different color. You probably heard it, it's called a split testing, but it's, it's a very simple thing to do, but you do need it. So you have two landing pages for the same campaign and see which one works. And whatever you do, don't, don't feel as if you can't change a landing page, change it around. If your conversions go down, change it back. If they go up, you know you've done the right thing. 
And as I said before, what works now, this landing page may be working now. In six months, it may not be working because people are changing devices. They're also changing the screens, the way they, they search. Things move all the time. So first off, your keywords. Then look at your ads. Then look at your landing page. Change them around in that order, one, two, three. Keep testing, keep changing. When you get it right on one campaign, then you can move on to your next campaign. But get one campaign right. Try it. Don't have three campaigns running at the same time at the start of all this and assume it will all work. Get one working, then the next, then the next. Start your return on investment as quick as you possibly can. You need to give it time. I know it sounds really strange with Google because you would expect Google to be really, really quick. Campaigns do not work straight away. You might be lucky and in the first month get a, get a conversion, but it's unlikely. You need to give it a minimum of three months with Google, and that's with the full management in place before you really start to see any sort of return towards your investment. So you're on a timeline. You might say, okay, we've got a budget for six months. We're going to try it for six months, but you get it set up correctly. You manage it correctly. Then after six months, you've got an honest way to say, Did, am I getting a return on investment? And if you are, naturally, then it's just a case of how much money you put in. And you will find a sweet spot where you put a certain amount of money in, you get a certain amount of leads. But then if you put even more in, you don't get any more leads. There will be a sweet spot. Like any advertising out of there, don't just do one type of advertising. For example, Google AdWords, you might want to use Facebook as well, LinkedIn. Don't use one type, whichever way you do it, but don't. But give it time. Too many people come to ourselves and say, please, can we have a return investment straight away? If anybody says they can, any, any agency out there says they can give an instant return, ignore them. They cannot. It's not possible to do it. You have to give this time. So that's, that's been a very quick overview of how to do it. With the setup, all to do with your keywords. Look at the keywords, segment them out. They will tell you what campaigns they are. They will tell you what ad groups they are. They will tell you what your landing pages need to be. And then you can set up your conversions. Bang, bang, bang. Your management side is exactly the same. Start with one campaign, one ad group, work down your keyword list, make sure you've got your negative keywords in there, keep an eye on your search terms and move it positive and negative. Look at your ads, then your landing page. Make sure that your conversion tracking is working 100%, but give it time. I know it sounds really strange, but it might well be at the start, if you're struggling with a setup, do get an expert in, because they can do a setup really really well and it might save you a lot of time in the, in the long run if it's something you want to manage yourself it might be worth bringing a professional in just to do the setup for example and then at least they can get that bit done but if you want to learn the setup and i highly recommend you do by the way because you learn a lot about your own business and uh, and what's key and, and what search terms people use if you do this yourself it's a, it's an exercise and i'm not going to lie it'll take you a few days to do just purely the keyword research itself i'm not going to lie that's how long it will take but it'd be really really good for you so that's pretty much a very good overview. Um, there's a few more websites coming. There's a few. There's another website coming, which I'll read the questions in a second. But I'll pass you briefly back to Tim for a few moments, um, just so I'll be able to read the questions at the same time. Bear me a second, but thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dominic, for that uh, excellent and very informative overview and just a reminder we will be sending out the video uh, on Monday so if there's bits you would like to look through um, in more detail you'll be able to get that chance. Um, we've had a request from Monica who'd like to uh, have uh, HJA's website uh, get in uh, Dominic's uh, not too critical and hopefully very helpful eye. Uh, so uh, well done to Monica for uh, volunteering your one as well. Uh, Dominic, I think, is on the case uh, and about to bring that up. Um, we have uh, 20 minutes for questions, so there's uh, time for more questions or indeed if you'd like your uh, website overviewed as well, send the link through as well. I think you've got uh, WW8 for some reason there. Uh, it's just HJA.
So we're there. Is, it, is there anything? Um, I, perhaps if I try and copy that uh, link, because uh, I think uh, Monica's particularly keen you look at the link. Let me just have a second. Hold on, folks, while we uh, switch places and uh, uh, get the right page up. Yeah, we're going to look at this one, Monica. I'm just bringing the link across so I can actually have a look at it for you. Um, and then we can have a, have a good look. Worst case scenario, if I can't, what I will do is I will have a look at this um, on Monday for you and actually send an email to you if need be. So you get a, oh, we can have a quick chat, for example. We can have a quick chat over the phone. We're just trying to get it across here now and hopefully uh, Tim's got it so I can see it now. It's copying the email. For some reason from the question box on uh, GoToWebinar, we can't actually copy that entire page. Um, is there any way of getting to that landing page from your website, by the way? So I can actually, we can click through to it, we just can't copy it for some bizarre reason, we can't copy it from the question box. Um, no, it's not actually coming across. Okay, well, as I say, what I can do for you, Monica, I will um, take this offline um, and I will then have a look at it for you and if uh, if you wish i'll drop you an email with the, with the points or, or or i'll drop you an email with my details and then you can just give me a call and we can spend five minutes ten minutes uh, having a talk about it and I'll, I'll run through it for you if that sounds good i can definitely do that for you um because tim tim's struggling to get this to get it there I, I was having the same problems so uh, for some reason we can't but are there any other questions before we uh, before we move on ah thanks yeah no problems monica no worries whatsoever no okay brilliant okay tim Okay, so we've got a couple of questions. Um, so we've got uh, quite a few people on the webinar who've not used uh, Google AdWords before. They've got to get the buy-in for budget for it. Uh, those of you who are from professional firms, many of you know that uh, even getting small budgets can involve quite a, a, a lot of negotiation and uh, uh, proving the points, especially in unknown territory. Um, what would be your advice for someone in that situation who's got to make a case for budget and indeed uh, three months of spending while Google gets its uh, swing into those? How, how, what would be your advice for making that sort of case? Yeah, that's a very good question. It's all to do about budget, to be honest with you. This is all to do about return on investment. Let's be honest, you don't do any other mar you don't do marketing if you're not going to get a return on investment. To be honest with you, each industry is different. Um, a good professional um, like ourselves can give you at least a good steer before we even start as to whether it's possible to, to balance and get yourself a return on investment. For example, an industry that does not work on Google AdWords is um, jobs. So people applying for jobs, that just does not work in Google AdWords whatsoever because there are far too many big websites out there that take the entire traffic. Whereas, for example, B2B works very, very well. Now, say, for example, if you're only going to be spending £100 in three months, it's far too low. You're not going to get enough information back to be able to refine your campaign to get a return investment. The minimum spend, and this is honestly pretty much on any industry, this is the minimum spend you need on a monthly basis, is around two to three hundred pounds. Depending on your industry, that's the minimum you need to be looking at. Any less than that, and there's not enough information coming through to make a return on investment. So if you're if you're so say for example, if you're the MD of the company, you look at your marketing budget for three months, you're gonna be looking at a thousand pounds plus a setup fee. So you're looking at give or take about thirteen hundred pounds for three months. Um, and that's the sort of budget you're looking at. Now, in the first three months, I'm honest, you're going to get almost no return on your investment in the first three months. So that's money that's going to have gone. However, in the next three months, you need to, one, recoup the first three months and then the next three months spend. So when you're working this out, you need to go, okay, how much is each lead worth? Each word, let's say each, word, each lead is worth £1,000. Okay, that's great. But of that... What actual profit is it? Let's say it's £500, 50%. So that's what you make on each in each, in each one you convert. Okay, well, how many people do you need coming through your website and filling out your contact form? Say, for example, you had 10 of them for, fill out your form. One comes out at the bottom. That means you need 10 filling out the form to produce that one £500 profit. The question then is how many times do people need to click your ads to produce 10 people filling out the form? Chances are 
it's going to be 100. You probably need 100 people clicking the ads, 10 people filling out the form, one person at the bottom. That's a relatively good and simple way to, to look at it. But that means how many, to produce 500 to 500 pound profit, you need 100 clicks. So you can start doing the maths very, very quickly. Well, that's, that's X number per price per click. So you need to do that first to say, in your industry, how much is your conversion worth? Realistically, take your costs out. Remember, don't just leave it at cost. Take all your costs out. That's how much you're worth, say, £500 profit. Work your way back. How many clicks will you need? And if you work on a 10% basis for each part of your stage, for example, 10%, 1,000 come in the top, uh, go to your landing page. 10% of those, 100 people will click out, click your click your form. And of those, 100, uh, of those 100, you might convert 10. So if you work on the 10% rule, you won't be a million miles off. You won't be bang on, but you're not going to be a million miles off. And that will tell you if Google AdWords will work for you. Simple as that. Hope that's helpful. Thank you very much for that. I think it would be fair to say that in some professional firms, they're quite happy to spend £500 on lunch, but they're not prepared to spend uh, sensible sums on other forms of marketing. Uh, perhaps part of that is because it's unknown, perhaps because uh, indeed professional firms have been burnt uh, by uh, uh, things in the past, not necessarily this sort of thing, but uh, where else they've spent the money through unrealistic expectations. And sometimes it's because uh, prof uh, professionals, as we know, are uh, pathologically unwilling to invest in marketing, even though the lifetime value of a good client might be hundreds of thousands or in a big firm even millions of pounds of fee income. We've had a question again from uh, Claudio uh, who's perhaps asking Dominic um, if you could just go a little bit into more detail about why he needs to, uh, I think Claudio you said your landing page but I think it was the home page uh, we were talking about so um, Dominic perhaps just say a little bit more about why uh, Claudio needs to, uh, or the benefits he would get from uh, redesigning the home page in a, a, the sort of way you were recommending. Yeah. Thanks Claudio, thanks for the question there. Basically, whenever you look at any website, and we're, we're looking at yours at the moment, it's all about what people will do when they arrive here. If somebody's typed in and you've come up on, on organic or, in, or in, 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 in this case it might be for, via an ad, when you arrive here, what do you want them to do? Because in essence, you, you, pay for, you pay for an ad. So you want people probably to contact you to produce a lead. That's what you really, you're after sales here. That's what you're really after. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, if, 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 you are, if, you're correct, if you are correct, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, I'm, our company only have a website, okay, so I'm doing two things at once here, uh, I'm reading yours at the same time, Claudio, so, but say for example somebody comes in here, as I did, I would read more, that's my first thing I want to do, there's nothing about contacting you, what I will do is read more, I'm going to click on that, and I'll start reading a little bit more, the company offers a wide range of foods, provides expertise, searching marketing, our commercial know-how ensures our experts are, but at no point did it say, give me a call, give us a call now, or contact us via email, or contact us via the form. It's leading the person down what you want them to do. And it, it might sound blunt, it's almost American advertising, to be honest with you. It is that blunt where people say, you need to do this. But if you don't tell people what to do, strange enough, people are, are fickle. They won't necessarily know to bother clicking the, the, the contact. Link. They'll just go, all oh, right, okay. And by this stage, they've gone, they haven't necessarily found the information they want because we don't know what, the, what information they need this stage. And they're already clicked another one and already gone to another website because that website may say, call me now if you want an instant answer. Right, pick up the phone, I'm done. And that's the difference. We've gone through your website very quickly. I wouldn't recommend, recommend changing it just purely on those few words. If you want to go into more depth, feel free to do give me a call and we can arrange, you know, five or ten minutes um, on, 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 offline and we can have a chat uh, specifically about your website and I can give you some good pointers and the reasons why to change. That, that would help, hopefully. I um, hope that answers uh, the question, Claudio, and please do take Dominic up on that offer. I think it's worth just saying a landing page. Um, this is the page you want people to come into on the website. It could be one of your 
pages like your home page or as in the case Dominic demonstrated most people create a specific page for their campaign so it's very easy uh, first of all to give people those sorts of calls to action where you want them to click and also it makes it very easy to measure the impact of your campaign because you know everybody come into that page came as a result of the Google ad so it's um, again a landing page might be your home page but it's much better uh, as Dominic demonstrated to have specific pages for your campaigns uh, now Dominic a question here um, people on the line may have heard um, the term remarketing uh, I was wondering if you can explain what remarketing is and how it works that's a very good question actually I didn't go through remarketing because it is the next stage basically what remarketing is is if somebody's been to your website and that can be from any source it doesn't need to go through Google AdWords it doesn't even need to use Google Chrome it doesn't need to come from Facebook it's anybody who's been in your website you can say okay from those people that have been to my website I want to show them the ads again because I know they're interested because they've been to my website you can break that down so you can actually have it anybody who's been to my home page anybody who's been to a very specific uh, product page or a service page and you can say all those people have been on that service page I want to present ads to them on a regular basis because I know they're interested this only works where your customer journey is long a good example of this if you're looking for a toaster you want to buy a toaster you're going to go to a couple of websites and you're going to have bought it within two or three minutes you're not going to go and then buy a toaster in two weeks time so if you re remarket that person and you keep remarketing them for a week strange enough they've already bought the toaster and you're wasting your money remarketing to them however if say for example you sell cars somebody doesn't go and buy a car in two minutes or very few people do they take several weeks and that's why you want to keep presenting the ads again you'll notice this yourself when you've been on websites and all of a sudden you think how on earth do they know I want that I've only just been on there and that's called remarketing the critical factor with remarketing you need 1,000 people to your website every month minimum before you can start remarketing any less than that and remarketing does not work so I'd say it doesn't work you physically can't turn it on so if anybody says oh yeah we can always do remarketing you can't you can only do it if you get a thousand people and then you look back at yourself and go okay if I need a thousand people to my website can I get that from Facebook can I get it LinkedIn can I get it from Google Ads where can I get my sources up so I get a thousand people coming so therefore I can then represent these ads to the important people there are other ways you can also do it by email so for example you might collect lots of email addresses you can actually import those email addresses into Google AdWords and when anybody's logged on as I'm logged on at at my email address at the moment in Google it presents me relevant ads to do that email address because I've, I've inquired on different websites it's that specific you can also do it via your profile so for example I've got my profile as info at ad extra on the Google profile I can have that on any anywhere and say okay anybody with that profile present ads to that profile because you've been on my website so that's remarketing it's it's well worth it but you need to have quite a lot of traffic going through your website to make it work Right, well, we are closing in on our finish time. So, um, if uh, any final questions? Uh, yes, so anyway, uh, just to let you know, on the screen there, we do have Dominic's phone number, ad details, uh, and email details should you want to get hold of him at add extra for a, uh, a little review of your landing pages uh, next week uh, also there is his ed, his uh, uh, website address and I think we can see from the uh, amounts of money that are involved not particularly large amounts of money but they quickly add up and there's clearly a lot of benefits that can be brought from an experienced eye to things so it's uh, clear to see how uh, the benefits of bringing in someone experienced will quickly bring benefits if you've been doing them yourself but not so successfully okay let us move on we've uh, covered questions um, we've covered a few of the 
areas where Dominic and his company help. Would you like to say a bit more, Dominic? Yeah, certainly. The services we offer, just to let you know, um, we offer obviously the, the um, Google Ads side of the coin. We do uh, we offer a free service to have a quick review of your campaigns, by the way. So if you've got an account set up, feel free to uh, drop me a line. We'll do a quick audit for you and give you an honest opinion as to whether you do need to reset it up or whether you're okay and it's quite good. But we can do an honest opinion for you to pop that across. We also do Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a free to tool from Google. If you get it set up correctly, it works wonders and you can really start working your website correctly for you and generating those leads. The other one is Google My Business. It's the free listing Google gives you. Uh, use that. Seriously, it's free. If you're unsure what Google My Business is, do pop out to our website and have a look because uh, you'll use it, if nothing else, definitely because it's free. And last but not least, we do training courses on all these. So if you want to keep your Google AdWords in-house, but need to, for example, you've got a, a marketing manager that needs to be trained up correctly, we do uh, training courses. And our training courses are very good as well. They're two half days. Um, so you do half a day, make sure you understand it. And the second half day is picking up on the bits you didn't understand and then the advanced side. But they're the, the four services we do. Thank you. There's lots of people on the webinar who are Kelso clients, and it's delighted that you could join us. There's also uh, quite a few people who are new to Kelso Consulting, so just let you know, as a public relations agency that's been around over 20 years, we do all the sorts of services that you would expect a firm that builds reputation to provide, particularly around building strong national media coverage. And indeed, we're award-winning for our thought leadership campaigns that position people as experts in particular sectors or on particular topics. We also do a wide range of services helping build reputation in other ways. This is through helping people gain awards. Indeed, one of my colleagues was on a, a lawyer awards judging panel for several years as we've got various law firms on the line. We help people with getting uh, gigs speaking at industry events. We're very keen on using uh, helping people use LinkedIn to amplify the effects. In fact, the people most likely to give and refer you work are already uh, contacts or second degree contacts on LinkedIn. So both using the uh, social media purposes and the advertising uh, possibilities on LinkedIn is something we help with. And uh, if you want to be seen as an expert uh, blogging or as uh, Posting articles online is a very powerful way uh, both of demonstrating that and indeed on attracting organic search to complement your pay-per-click Google advertising as well. And we help with all of that. So do get in contact with me or my colleagues um, to uh, find out more about those. Okay, we've covered everything on the questions. We have some more webinars coming up. If you found that useful, we'll be looking at blogging and also about creating, uh, the str uh, uh, creating a strategy that delivers a business winning reputation in 2020. Do sign up for those, they're complimentary. And we've had various recent ones and the recordings of those are available on our website as well, uh, looking at getting national media coverage and getting your thought leadership right. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope you join us in the near future. And uh, may I wish you a pleasant rest of your day. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, thank you very much uh, from Dominic here. And as I say, if anybody wants to contact me after the webinar, feel free. There are my details on the screen. Please uh, drop me any emails because uh, there's going to be a lot of questions. Uh, Feel free, give ourselves a call. But thank you very much for listening. Thank you.